It's just about doing it. It's like one day it's an empty wall and the next day there's a beautiful new circle of mud. So it, it's very magical. Public art is interesting because you're engaging audiences that aren't necessarily intending to see your work. Having that moment of engagement that isn't intentional is very important to me. The gratification of coming into a public space like this and inserting these objects into the public realm, you have this interaction with the public. Not even necessarily knowing that what they're encountering is meant to be an art experience, it's just is really very gratifying. 16 York used to be uh, on water. This is all landfill. And when you look at this painting and you see the, the brilliant and vibrant blues and oranges, the sunset on the lake, I just thought it would really jump to life in the lobby of this building. With these sculptures and probably any other sculptures from this series, the objective for me is to just sort of assist people in seeing the very clear, obvious iconography of their immediate surroundings in a different way. They're meant to be playful. You know, you walk around it and you can look inside and you can see the, the stove to, to keep the, uh, the railway workers warm. Some of these parts are authentic, historic parts from rail cars that I was able to resource. I think public art can be a disruption of our day to day and help us take time and contemplate the world around us. I, I make the work and it, I put it into the world and it can take its chances so people can, they can look at it as they wish. They can see it as a very powerful, beautiful image and a very human image made, made by a human hand. The circle is my order, but then all the splashes and rundowns and the drips is the disorder made by nature. So it's always a balance between what I do and what nature does. I'm, I'm happy to have the chance to work in a beautiful building like this. So all of the artwork at 16 York is individually significant because each piece tells a different story that harkens back to what this neighborhood once was. It, it, it brings life to the building. There's a vibrancy to it, whether it's the water and the Wonka piece, whether it's the railway and the Lars piece, or whether it's the mud and the earth and Richard Long's piece. They're all embedded in the history of the community.